But this is this is serious here. Mengist, Yanta, Natana, the right way, the spiritual sodomy way, right, right here. Of those who have gone astray from His Majesty, Mengist, Yanta, Nowina. This is a very key word. They've changed the gender, just as the serpent changed the agenda and the gender to deceive Eve. Right? Deceiving Eve is like deceiving the church, both a female and also the soul. Owl, owl. Speaking to the Israelites, speaking to the black Hebrews, speaking to the black Hebrew Israelites. You know, they like to say, oh, we're not black Hebrews, we're just Hebrew Israelites. Speaking to the black and the brown lost found sheep in the house of Israel. Right, the self-admitted Israelites, whether they're of the ISUPK or the IUICGMS or any one of the Black Hebrew alphabet boys, is you is or is you ain't, right? As the children of the Ethiopians to the Lord, is you is or is you ain't? See, let's focus on Amos nine and seven. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel? Saith Right, saith Yod Hey Weh Hey, saith Yahweh, saith Yahweh, Yahweh Yah, saith He who be who He be, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hu. Right, blessed be He. Haters, the haters of I and I, the children of Zion, the children of the King of Kings, I and I, Rastafari Jah people. How our enemies have coordination, Father Dow, they're communicating from their camp to camp. And in this time of this persecution that I and I is going through, it is not wise that we remain divided and not communicate. We who are the mansions right, of Rastafari and the various ones and ones. You know what I'm saying? And this is why this crisis, you know, this crisis and this persecution, right? When we look in the, in the glory of his majesty, the Bible, it is a good thing. For I and I. And this is to encourage the brothers and sisters because no doubt you're seeing, hearing these lies and blasphemies against the King of Kings, against Christ, talking about this and that and the next thing. And many of the I them don't know. It's not right and exact, but some of y'all might even doubt because are we really studying to show ourselves approved? Are we really keeping our Father's instructions first, front and center? My brothers and sisters, this is why we have to iron sharpen iron. And this is why we have to, you know, tighten up our communication and our coordination. Our communication. All right, Shalom. I'm Salanta. This is Wendem Ras Alonso Teferi reporting for the Lion of Judah Society. It's, um, it's Friday, August 12, 2016. It's 3.54 a.m. All right, so, Ja Willing. You know, during the intro of this presentation, uh, you should have already seen some video clips, uh, particularly of um, Razia Dinos Teferri and I went to Miadon, and um, probably one on where he's um, correcting the the errors of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church um, concerning uh, the our Black Lord and Savior's um, uh, prayer, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMashiach, or, you know, the, the Father's Prayer, and um, possibly a clip of, um, what's the other one, uh, you know, he's, um, Razia Dinos Teferri is kind of pointing out um, that I and I as Rastafari, I got to pick it up and, and study to show I and I self approved, and then the last clip will be, um, you know, Razia Dinos Teferri kind of going into, um, or checking, or how do you say it, um, reproving uh, the, the black Hebrew Israelite community. So, when we were like uh, meditating on this, um, actually we did some presentation in Spanish, and we seen Wendem Yadon like using uh, the pointer, and so just because we saw the pointer, it kind of made sense to bring forth this presentation, which would be... Um, a way to, um, you know, to give light to the fact that that in many ways and forms, shapes and forms, many ways, shape and forms, you know, scripture is 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 active always, and I think that's one of the most um, uh, difficult aspects of of the walk of a spiritual walk. You know, when you receive the holy scriptures to be true, 
and even if I'm not mistaken, I think that has a lot to do with um that prophecy that came forth from the mouth of Balaam, um Bilam. That's to say, when he said that I shall see him, but not now. I shall see, uh, you know, I shall you know something, but not now. So basically, it's like there's a time gap, there's a space, and as long as people keep pretending that the Bible that the word of God is not living and present today actively amongst ourselves this very minute this very moment then there's a there's a separation and so I think that that's that has a lot to do with um with the disconnect that people have because um then you could keep on picking and choosing and everything comes down to the simple fact that that it's not a racial problem per se although it is well um, evident that it, it plays a great part in it but um in these latter days it's more of a, a problem uh, amongst the individuals and the most high we refuse to accept that he is true we refuse to accept that his word is living active and um and just accurate and you know to its fullness you know revealed to us we refuse to accept that because then you know that kind of leaves um any kind of doubt uh out of the question you know and so that means that you have to accept what he has revealed and that is oftentimes the most difficult part of the walk the spiritual walk to accept that what he created is what has to be accepted because uh, you know our hearts the imagination of our hearts is so evil that we ruin the outcome because we already imagined our own and so when it doesn't turn out to be what we had imagined it to be you know we just don't like it and so that's pretty much like the uh the basis of of all difficulties it's misinterpretation adam wasn't able to rightly interpret the word of the most high um or wasn't able to teach eve how to receive or interpret correctly the word and so it all begins with misinterpretations or rather, perhaps um, we desire not to accept his his revelation, and rather interpret for ourselves the way to, you know, to go straight. So enough enough about that. Basically, um, it it also depends on how how you're looking at things. You can investigate to do wrong. You can investigate to do right. Pretty much, um, it, it's the intention behind, uh, you know, a work. The intention behind an act. What is it that you're trying to achieve, good or bad? And so it, it can't be bad because then, then we've not corrected anything since the beginning. We must see the good for what it is, and he is good, and what he reveals is good. Now, so let's begin by uh, probably going into, this will make a little bit more sense as we go forward. So we're going to go to Exodus chapter 4 real quick. Um, Exodus chapter 4, verse... 1 through 5 I believe and um, it's gonna make sense what what um it, what those video clips of Raciatino Staferi have to do with it and well I guess I could um bring forward like a, a kind of like a clue as to what we're headed towards and it's the fact that judgment has to be righteous and according to his will so basically in the video clips you see um, when the don't using the pointer to point for a good reason, to to pierce for a good reason, for a good cause, for a just cause, which is worthy to be sustained according to the eyes of heaven, and thus a judgment will be in our favor. He's accusing, not accusing, but pointing out the the um, the errors of the Ethiopians, pointing out the errors of Aina Rastafari, pointing out the errors of the Black Hebrew Israelite community, and that's what it's all about—a righteous judgment. So now. Exodus chapter 4 verse 1 and Moses answered and said but behold they will not believe me nor hearken to my voice for they will say the Lord hath not appeared to thee is this not the problem you know uh, you know like Jews in particular like Caucasian European Jews you know they like to pretend that oh you know every, all these Christians they worship JC Penny they worship JC and that's completely idolatrous uh, you know, it's idol worship. It's making an image. Well, no. Um, the people of Israel had to go through Moses, and they had to accept the Moses. And without accepting Moses, they had no, they had no direct um, uh, access 
to Yahweh Elohim. You know, so it's it's no different really. The only thing is that if we really follow Moses, then we would follow Jesus Christos because um he has been um you know declared to be he who we be, and he who be who we be, in the in the um, spirit of prophecy, according to the revelation of this modern time, has revealed himself in the person of Edomachen Selasi. But in order to be in the first power of that Trinity, one must accept the power that is the Trinity. And so he that expresses that perfect name, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in one person, in the flesh, and spirit, and in soul, he has testified that Jesus Christos is true. But not just any J.C. Penny, um, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Black Lord and Savior. Now, see time. It all goes back to time and goes forward into time. There's a separation. There's a disconnect. So how do we know that that we're not worshiping JC, the false image, or or how do we know that we have the truth? Well, because he, the Son said He go to the Father, and we shall see Him in the Father, and because we know Him, we'll be in the Father. And so, uh, you know, Philip is how should we know the Father? Show us the Father. Have I not been so long a time with you, Philip, and you still know not the Father? Just know, you know, you're not really going to understand. Just know that. You'll see me in the Father because I and I is one. And because the I is in I, then I and I is one with the Father. Because it's um, Shema Israel, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Ahad, Israel Hoy, Simam Lakachin, Exaber and Exaber Now He is one, one one of us, and I and I is, is, is one with Him. So He is one person. You know, but um, one spirit, one body, one soul. But then again, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, decides to manifest itself in its abundance, um, in its abundant ability to to be uh, to creativity, and manifest himself in the personality as he so chooses to fulfill himself. You know, because he is, he cannot deny himself, and we are in him. So the Holy Spirit really gives it like um, this element of eternity, in that he, you know, he shall manifest his personality through individuals that have been pre destined, chosen, elected, and, um, you know, uh, you know, set in place to be these ones, the ones that the rest of the populace or multitudes have to go through in order to, to get linked to the first power of the Trinity, just like we are sent to Jesus Christos, but not just any Jesus Christos, we're sent to the one that has been raised from corruption, free from sin, perfect, sinless, because we see him in his majesty, and so we know that it's true. His Majesty confirms that Jesus Christus is, but not just any Jesus Christus, but the one that His Majesty, Majesty testifies to. So, but who would believe this? Well, that's part of the thing. You have to go through through some middlemen. You know, that's just the way it is, because um, you have to show faith in those that He hath sent. Because if you accept the ones that He hath sent, then you accept He who sent Him, who hath sent the ones that, you know, that you are accepting that he sent. This might sound confusing, but basically, I and I was called the Philly Selassie first. He sent us to Jesus Christus. We didn't understand. We didn't complain. We didn't like it, but but we still did it. If I say he's God, then I must give reverence to him. So I study the Bible, and then behold, now I knew. It was written. It had to be that way. So even though the Holy Spirit manifests in, in multiple personalities as he so wishes to manifest his word in the flesh, then even though that is so, there are certain characters that have been um, chosen and raised above others um, to be, to be like these, um, uh, to be, you know, in the image and likeness of himself, according to the authority of the Son of the Living God, and in this latter time, you know, himself in 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 and and as our Holy Father, you know, upon the highest level or seat upon human government as Nikus Nigesht Zetiopia. So, but who would believe, right? And the Lord said to him, What is that in thy hand? What's in thy hand? And he said, A rod, so a mate, a uh, mate, that's to say a staff, a twig, a branch. A branch. His strength is in is um in that branch, a rod. Um and then eventually it could be even translated uh to a tribe. But um, you know, let's see, what could we say about that? You know, a rod just kind of makes us like a, I don't know, maybe if it's a, a walking stick or something like that, what would that mean? It means that man has to be broken and he must be humbled. It doesn't matter what age you are, but it takes one that is capable of, of realizing that he must be humbled regardless of the age for him to 
to be able to obtain, um, you know, uh, strength before the most time. So everyone goes through a series of trials, you know, uh, before they get um, positioned. So now it continues saying, and he said, cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said to Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. Uh, verse 5, it says, They that believe that the Lord God, Yahweh looking of their fathers. So, he that be who he, is, who, he, that be, who he be, the power of I and I fathers. So that original power would then eventually translate to the power, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Yisihak, the Elohim of Yaakov. So we have an original, he that be who we be, and that power is manifested in the Holy Trinity. We can see it right here. You know, Abraham, Yisihak, and um, Yaakov. So, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Yaakov, hath appeared to thee. In other words, you know, if you want to shorten this up, you know, Kedamai so now it's very interesting because um, this is this is um, pretty much one of the one of the 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 key problems that nobody really expects the Bible to be true. So when we say, "Behold, the the line of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed," you know, the root of David to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof, nobody really expects it to be true. So when you show it to them, um, they refuse it because they probably imagine something you know completely ridiculous, and so that's very that's very difficult to. To um, accept, you know, because of pride, but pride must be overcome. As a matter of fact, that Hashetan, it's 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 I and I in in the garden. It's that serpent within. It's the lowest um, soul aspect of the human body, the the animalistic, the the beast um, nature of the body. And so, when Moses was able to take that and erect it and align himself according to to the will of the Most High, having had been humbled, then he received power. And so we see um, it's an overcoming of, of uh, you know, the lower self. And, you know, it begins with confession in the garden. Whose fault is it? It's Adam's fault. Why didn't he say so? He should have said so. That's it. It begins with a simple confession. It is my fault. It doesn't matter if the life that I've lived has, has um, brought to me things that may have appeared to be wrong. Or unfair but you are not unfair and you are not wrong you are true you are all-powerful and this is your will my suffering is your will then I must accept that it is for my good then I must accept and take responsibility for all the wrong that I have done and there's no one else to excuse why should I say it's the woman that you created you're the problem God well that's not the thing you know and the woman you know well the serpent you know it's the serpent and the serpent what did the serpent say can the serpent even speak you know, we'd rather pretend and believe a lie, aliens, reptiles, or reptilians, anything but to accept that. No, I am the problem. But I also have the ability to, you know, to overcome that simple confession and then keep walking. So anyways, what I'm nice trying to say is that, yeah, I don't, you know, in pointing, you know, he's grabbing that, that pointer by the tail and he's using the head, you know, to teach. So that staff becomes on. Um, becomes a branch, uh, a righteous branch, because Yadon taught the fullness of the first power of the Trinity, br bringing um, Christ to Ainai. But um, it's not to say that Christ didn't bring himself to Ainai. Ainai is already in Christ since before creation, but the thing is that we live in a, in a habitat, in an experience, though, which has to be affected um, at first, at least through the same, uh, you know, through the same, uh, you know, creatures or anything that is um, that is in the same vibrational field, you know, if we could say it in that sense, we have to, like man has has fallen asleep, and so we cannot perceive the things unperceivable. That's to say, we are extrasensorial, our extra like um, uh, sensory perception is, has been disconnected. It's dormant. It's not functioning, and so we can't have a direct communication. So we do need something in the flesh that can mediate, you know, that beginning step. And so it's Wendem Yadon that, you know, the first that at least I know that came preaching, teaching, 
and testifying that Jesus Christus is the Son of the Living God, and Haile Selassie I has declared that in him he is well pleased. And behold, you know, I and I go forth in in that same in that same truth. So now let's let's um we're gonna go forward on to like uh, the book of Numbers, chapter twelve, and watch. This is um this is where kind of I would have uh, thought that the connection would be a little bit more um uh, more precise in regards to the rod and the video clips. So basically, it's gonna read this. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So basically, here we go. Uh, well, let me add this. And they and they said, Had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? You know, hath he not also spoken by by us? And the Lord heard it. So anyway, so what's this about? You know, it's about that you were told you can't have from this tree, but you want from that tree. Just leave the tree alone. You have everything, but you want more. You want that which others may have had. So what is it to you, Miriam and Aaron, that Moses married an Ethiopian? It's the fact that you can't deal with the, with the truth that he has revealed himself, and you just don't accept his revelation. It, it's basically what it comes down to. You see, it, if we go to Genesis um, uh, chapter 1, verse 26, it'll give us a or verse 26 or 27, I can't remember. Um, 27, it says, So God created man in his own image, in his own mi in, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So God created man in his own image. Now we're going to see an image of this image. We're going to see a mirror image, a reflection of self. And, and um, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. But perfection because man male and female created he them so basically miriam and aaron are witnessing to the fact that he has revealed himself in 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 this truth and they just can't accept that because they don't like it because maybe they had other ideas maybe they wanted to be you know the ethiopian woman maybe they wanted to be moses it don't matter the thing is that they're not accepting what what god has revealed and instead of um looking into truth you're there's they're instigating problems so basically a way to kind of like um, get this uh, a little bit better is when it says because of, uh, we have here a concordance, it's the H182, um, O dot, O dot, let's see, and it's, it's taking a little bit to, to open up, but it's it's pretty much going to like lead us to to the fact that it has to do with um, O dot, it has to do with like circling, it says here, let's see, turnings. Um, whence causes circumstances they didn't like the circumstance they didn't like what it turned out to be they didn't like the reason that that Jack gave because he in the beginning is the logos the reason why and they didn't like that reason why maybe they they thought too highly of themselves the affairs the turnout of the affairs to turn to to turn around to turn around you know um, maybe maybe things were turned or flipped upside down to them according to what they were imagining way manner cause form uh to be turned maybe they were turned in their stomachs because they they were hating on that woman uh, they just didn't like the, the the revealed manifestation you know so they were having a difficult time with that on account of the causes on account on account of what happened they didn't like it for for my sake it says here uh, for these causes that well anyways i think that's enough that gives us some clarity but but to get receive even more we're going to go to the h18 one H181, which is the root to this word Odot, and it's going to take us to Yud, and that one's really going to, like, um, you know, enlighten I and I. It, it's about being humble, being, you know, just being true, sincere. Uh, you know, just uh, don't don't be a giant, you know, be, be, a, be, you know, just be small before, let God be giant, let God be the biggest, and let him be praised, let, let all honor be given him. So yud is um, a wooden poker. So basically, what we're, we we see a reflection of self. You know, Moses married an Ethiopian, and e no, it says. Um, let's see, let's read that. It says, because what's the turning? What's the turnout of events? What's the circumstance? Well, that that Moses. Um, well, they spoke against Moses because because of the Ethiopian woman who he married. 
before he had married an Ethiopian woman. So we see a, a, a circle going on. We see like a flow, um, one like the other, a mirror image. So they're going in circles. And what are they doing? What are they doing? What are Moses and Miriam doing? They're talking smack. They're, they're, they're poking. They're instigating. They're using this wooden poker instead of teaching, instead of, you know, pointing at, at that which is true. Behold, he has married an Ethiopian woman. No doubt this is future revelation and present manifestation. But no, they were poking um, or with the youth, they were using the youth for an unedifying purpose, you know, just hating a wooden poker, so called from the fire being stirred with it. So they were stirring the pot. They were trying, you know, they were just messing around, going around in circles on something that's none of their business, as if, as if it was going to change anything. Going in circles, stirring the pot, you know, kind of like when, you know, it reminds us of, of Yaiko. You know, he was probably stirring the pot so that Esau could walk in and smell that, you know, so... This is not something in the flesh. This is something that's coming from our ancestors. And so we got we to gotta recognize that and not attack the flesh, but, you know, fix it up in heaven because that's where it comes from. Then the flesh automatically just um, it gets corrected because, you, we, because then we would not have accused the brethren for, you know, we are just being moved and swayed by, um, you know, by forces in high places. So now it says, um, hence any burnt wood. So, you know, poking, poking Moses and, um, you know, with a firebrand, branding him with fire, you know, marking him, accusing him, you know, for no reason. Now, you know, I think it's, it would be, it'd be kind of like, um, I don't know if I should go forward and, and, and make the correction because the Ethiopian eunuch would actually be, um, be the, the good example because you see. Um, you know, the Spirit tells Philip to go to the south on his way, which is um, Gaza or something like that. And then, behold, an Ethiopian eunuch. So he runs up to the cart and he says, uh, what, what do you, you know, the Ethiopian eunuch is reading uh, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. So Philip says, um, you know, do you understand it, what to read it? And humbly, the Ethiopian eunuch being on top of the, uh, of the ride of the carriage, he's like, uh, well, how could I let anyone teach me? So Philip comes up, and so he, he goes forward and teaches them. You know, they're they're um they're going over over Isaiah 53, and um and so basically it it all comes down to the eunuch saying like, hey, behold, there's water. What what prevented me, you know, from from being baptized? And I just want to get to the fact to his testimony. He says, um, you know, I believe that Jesus Christus is the Son of God, and I think um. Let's see, the Amhara gives light to to what it really gets down to. I think he says, um, it, I really can't remember, but um, let's see. I hope I have it here. Let's see. No, this is too far already. Well, it would be something to the effect of... Uh, yeah, I can't guess this. I'm going to have to check. I really didn't want to spend too much time because I wanted to get through a whole, like, a, a whole bunch of things, you know, because uh, I know I and I, is, um, as a people, is very busy, uh, you know, so chances of ones seeing this, we'd rather accumulate more information in the smallest amount of time, you know, but um, so be it. We opened our mouth. Now we got to uh, bring this forth. We're trying to go to Yehawariyat uh, Shira, Acts of the Apostles. Let's see, chapter 8. All right. Um, let's see. If you could give us uh, one second, let's see, let's see. Phil Bosman, okay, good job, child. It says so. All right, so it says Jesus Christos ye exabrilich in the hone am nalehu ale. Basically, this is very important because it's it's doing the complete opposite that um that that Moses did. No, 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 that Miriam and Aaron did. He's saying Jesus Christos Yeshua Hamashiach. Of Exaber, his son, is the son of Exaber. 
is the Son of God, of our Sustainer. Inde, in like manner, or in account of, or because of, in likeness to, what has come to pass, hone, what has resulted, what has been manifested, what has came to pass. Amnalihu, then I put my trust and I then I credit I, I, I have confidence in the and in that Ale in that it is so that he is I agree with this so it, it changes everything because it's not just this idea of belief of like oh yeah I believe because because what what does that mean no the Ethiopian eunuch was like oh, okay so we're reading scripture so you come up and you're pointing with the youth, you're pointing out some of these things. All right, you remember that dude that, that stood up in the synagogue and, and you know, he kind of disturbed um, the feast days all the time. That time when he was um, opening, opening, you know, like releasing all the, all the animals, you know, that people were selling and buying and, and turn the money uh, changers or whatever. Remember that dude? Remember the dude that everyone's always after? Remember the dude that's always um, interrupting? The dude that's always like causing a big problem? You know him? All right, let me tell you a little bit more about him. Remember the guy that stood up in the middle of um, of that high holy day? And then he just yelled, you know, like while everyone's doing as expected, you know, like following protocol and being, you know, being attentive to, to the ceremony. Remember he that stood up and said, all those that thirst come to me interrupting and, and paying no respect to the high priest or to the whole ordination or the whole celebration. Remember him? You can't forget him. Everybody knows him well. This, 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 and, and that. And so the eunuch is like, oh, okay, so this Jesus Christos, uh, no doubt he's the son of God. He is the Christos because, um, because, uh, because he's like, because of um, the likeness of what has come to pass. Then I have full confidence that he is, that it is him. So basically, what is he referring it to? What is he um, comparing it to? What likeness and what image? Well, to the likeness and image of the very word that he has just explained to him. And it's very important to actually, and we brought this forth on another video, but, you know, Isaiah 53 really doesn't, it really doesn't um, help if you don't start in Isaiah 52. It, where it says, um, Jehovah's Yahweh's servant marred and, and, and afterward exalted. Verse 13, chapter 52, the, the book of the prophet Isaiah says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. According to who? According to the eyes of heaven, but according to man. That's the complete opposite. Because because we hate on that. As soon as Jah exalts someone, it's like you, you hate him. Because you just can't accept that that's what Jah has, has, has um, revealed. So, in a sense, it's like, um, yeah. To us that can receive, that have been given it, to be able to receive, then to him, to us, you know, he's exalted. He's... He's extolled. He's on, um, you know, he's put on high. But to the world, this is how it continues. And many were astonished or astonished, astonished at the, his vestige or his vestige was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him for that which hath not been told then shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they then consider. Here's a footnote. It says the literal rendering is terrible. So marred from the form of man was his aspect that his appearance was not that of a son of man, not human, i.e. not human. The effect of the brutalities described, and it says Matthew and stuff like that, but, but we could utilize um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and all that. Um, Leviticus, you know, towards the end of Leviticus, basically, is, and, and we said this in a, in, in a video, like, not too, not too long ago, you know, it, it's taking us forward to Genesis, the beginning, because Jah is going to form creation to his image and likeness, how he wants to do it, and we have no say in it, we just have to, I won't, I won't, and I mean, you know, true, true, I believe, I accept, I credit, I have confidence. The second verse says, And the earth was without form, and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. See, if we're looking at this according to the flesh, then, you know, we, we have no chance. But we must see the Spirit that, you know, that that um that is above the waters, you know. So, 
in, in other words, we're not going to see what, what we desire. And because what we desire is, is, um, is we desire a golden cap, something pretty. And because it's not pretty, then we, be, then we make it less than what it really is because we can't receive the spirit of it. And if you want to take it to another level, then he definitely can't be a black man because a black man has been made less than a man, perhaps even not a man. And so this whole image that has been falsely um, forced upon a black man kind of like um, cancels out any chance that most of us can ever even begin to just imagine that somehow in, in the most distant fantasy, God can be a black man. But then again, that same image, it, it not only has affected other men, but black men as well, because it wasn't the black skin that was a problem from the beginning. It's the fact that we just don't want to accept what God has revealed. It's, it's, it's nothing other than that. Because if it was about the skin or the color of the skin of an individual, then all black people should accept his majesty to be God because they would say, that's God. That's the king of kings. We accept him. I won't, I won't, and amen. Yeah, surely he, he is God. But because it has nothing to do with skin color, and it has everything to do with the wickedness, the wicked imagination, evil imagination of our hearts and how we are rebellious and how we do not desire to accept his will. Then it becomes obvious that that no, it really doesn't have anything to do with the color of one's skin, because then it doesn't make sense that, you know, that we would reject them, you know, and. That's a whole different story. But anyways, what we were trying to get out of this is that the eunuch was like, he was okay with whatever it was. He wasn't looking for anything. He was looking for, this is the word. You're explaining it to me. And because of what you have told me on account of what you have said in likeness or in the image and likeness in, in this, um, you know, in this kind of like uh, your reflection of, of what you have said and the life that this man has lived. And the, and the circumstances that have come to pass, then I, I have faith. I, I credit this man with being him that is the son of God. You know, there is water. What prevented me from being baptized? So he accepted it. And now this whole baptism thing, it's also very important. We also mentioned it in an earlier video. You know, in the name, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, well, who are they? Most people have a celestial father that they cannot put a, a face to because if you tell them, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, they say, no, nah, that can't be. So they're baptized in the name of the father, just an ex-father, random father. And Jesus Christos, you know, you know the one, the same one that, that brought about slavery, that brought about colonialism, that brought about war and death and torture. Um, you know, it doesn't make sense. So baptism is very important because... Um, it has to be proclaimed in the very image and likeness of the of the revealed uh, uh, spirit of prophecy in its, you know, according to the season or time. Uh, and so that season and time is right now. And that spirit of prophecy has revealed himself in Kedama Echel Selassie, the, you know, the full power of the first trinity. And so we must declare that name because because now we know who is the likeness of the Son, Jesus Christos. We know the likeness of the Father in whom is the son through the spirit so we have that that you know we have that fullness in one name represented in one personality in one character as the king of kings of ethiopia and so then we must proclaim that name and be baptized you know and it doesn't have to do anything with water you know just to proclaim you know just for self's sake hey do you accept this then you are testifying and you are making covenant with the most high yourself that you are that you are well conscious that you are declaring this to be true. Whatever's in your heart, we don't know. But you're taking that up to, to the Most High. And so it becomes a, a contractual agreement. It becomes the fact that that which was a void and formless and that was just like, you know, not an image or not any comeliness that we should desire, then we have desired it. We have accepted it because that has been His will. So actually, and for those that LOJ Society Espanol, for those that um, think that this isn't necessary, well, I would ask that if you've ever taken in consideration to honor um, the gray-headed, <laughs> the gray-haired. Now, I'm not saying Wendem Yadon is gray-haired, but he's, it's a way to say I and I elder. So would you honor the work that he has uh, already brought forth? Well, I would say that we would have to. 
And if we did, then we would have already turned in our applications to be official members of the Line of Judah Society. You see, I hear a lot of a lot of ones saying, oh yeah, to represent the society, represent the society. Well, have you even submitted like an application to the society? Have you ever even gone through with that process? As a matter of fact, it's over there. Well, that's the beginning. And if you think that, oh, but you know, you're taking it seriously. Yeah, because my brother Wendem Yaron, or that's redundant, my brother Gracia Dinos Teferri, he himself, you know, he spent a lot of time uh, doing this, organizing this, and the least ones could do is accept his his um how he has brought forth the society and so um accept the image and likeness to which has been set up so there's no reason why not to to follow the process and if ones would have taken clear or or careful look into um the the order of of um it says here the church order the UCC universal church code then you would know that part of the admission is to you know, is to is to give that same testimony that that um the Ethiopian eunuch says this word of witness is complete is completed by candidate in the example of the utterance of the Ethiopian eunuch declaring the admission of faith contained in the Acts of the Apostles chapter eight verse thirty seven. One said, "All whom are present shall say Amen." So you know, there's there's protocol. Have we have even done this? You know, so this is part of baptism, but um that's kind of like. Just it's, it's it's all related, but it's um you know a little bit off topic, but not really. So now going forward, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, basically they were you know instead of doing what's right, you know they they poking, they trying to you know start something. But now the interesting thing is um that yud, uh, which is the h one eight h one eight one one eight one h one eight one you they wooden poker a firebrand now it's it's used in a couple of other places um uh, the one place that's interesting is isaiah chapter 7 verse 4 because it speaks about two tales and uh it makes mention of ephraim and then firebrand so uh, there's another reference to um amos 4 11 but the one that we'd like to go into is um zechariah chapter 3 verse 2 let's see if we can um just kind of like squeeze all of this let's see um zechariah chapter 3 verse 2 well let me start with verse 1 and he shoot he showed me joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the lord and satan uh, so let's see it says um standing at his right hand to resist him to to be a high shaitan to him and the lord said to 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 satan the lord rebuked the old satan even the Lord hath chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee. That hath chosen Jerusalem, um, rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? So basically, it's high shaitan bringing forth his um, accusation. Why do you marry an Ethiopian woman? Because you married an Ethiopian woman. Um, I don't understand why you had to marry an Ethiopian woman. And then, you know, Job appears. He said, listen, why don't you all shut up? Miriam, Aronda, you know, like... It, when I speak to prophets and stuff like that, I'll reveal myself in parables, dark sayings, and dreams. Not with Moses. I, he's faithful in all my house. I reveal myself, you know, mouth to mouth, face to face. What what prevented you from fearing him? Should you not be as one that is um, half dead, consumed, when coming out of her mother's womb? Basically, Miriam became leprous, you know? So maybe you should put your hand inside your bosom and, you know, hope that when you bring it forth it's not white as snow and um that's that anyways but going forward to this hashitan is bringing an accusation but something happened this is giving us a uh uh like a a foreshadowing of, of the future it says um firebrands i think it did say firebrands or something to that effect but basically now hashitan is is um is poking you know at john making these accusations because um, if you argue against Moses, you're arguing against uh, Jah. Because, you know, I think Jah goes on to say, like, listen, you think he doesn't know what he's doing? You think that he's acting on his own? He does what I tell him to do. He does as I have instructed him to do. Why don't you just kind of, like, realize what that what that means? Yeah, so it says, um, let's see, uh, you know, 
even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Like, have I not tested them? Have I not put them through the fire? Have I not marked them with, um, you know, with this um, fire brand? So that's the question. Have I? And so the the same um, word comes into play, yud. But in this time, because of the the you know the progress in in um in the prophecy, now this time there's no no standing accusation. It can't really go forth, you know, because now both are tried. Have I not tried them, you know? And have I not um have I not plucked out of the fire? So basically. It's declaring the fact that, okay, they're, they've been tried, and they, they've been tested, and have I not redeemed them? As a matter of fact, it's like to say, um, let's see, uh, it's uh, plucked. Plucked would be the H5337, which is interesting. It's um, natsel, natsela, to draw out, to pull out. And then we have a, like a Amharic um, reference. It's netzel, netzel. It's kind of like netza. Netze, le is of or to, or of I think of um, or I think it's hold up. Let me check something real quick. I think I have some notes over here. It's uh, let's see, let's see. Well, I should have had it immediately at hand. Let's see, le le le. Well. I don't seem to. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Well, two or four. So to to um to take up to netse to lift up. You know, like nasa netse netser. If you add a, a rosh or you know a race like an r at the end, that's like netser. You know. So in this case, it's like. It also has to do like with being free. Have I not freed them? Have I not pulled them up? Have I not lifted them out of you know out of the 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 fire? Have they not been tried? In other words, they have to take away, to strip off, to snatch out of danger, to preserve, to deliver, to deliver. Basically, these are from above. Have I not um, taken them up? Have they not been born from above? So basically, it's, it's like a, a, you know, a, a rebuke, because from thence, then they, you know, the, I think the priest, uh, he gets on his, um, his, his garments, his clean garments, and he gets rid of the old garments. So the accusations are invalid because he's been tried and he's proven himself worthy. Not that he proved himself worthy, but Yeshua HaMashiach, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, he is our righteousness, and through him, when we accept that, then we too are, are plucked out or pulled up or netzer, so we become that same branch. It's like kind of like grabbing that snake and erecting it. And who's the snake? Who's the serpent? It is I. He has aligned me. He has corrected me. And <clears throat> he's made me realize, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm the problem. But he straightened me up. And so he took me by the, by the tail. And now the head has become a pointer. You know, and so now I and I, is, instead of, accusing everyone it's that fault it's because this happened to me it's because it's because of the gangs in the neighborhood it's because of what the police do to me it's because of um how my mom treated me it's because of this you know it's all this kind of bs that's just excuses instead of saying well it's me you know you told me not to do something and and i did it the serpent even if it's a living talking serpent has nothing to do with it uh the covenant will, was with me ja and i ate from the tr from that tree of knowledge and good and evil my bad, you know, um, be a man, you know, just accept the one, one thing that I listen, Ja gave me the, the ability to listen to my mom when I, you know, it, this I listened, I don't know for what reason, now I know because so that I could use it this day to teach it, to use it as an example, we were before like all the teachers and, and, and they were all accusing me and I would not just confess and say that it was me, so my mom looks at me and she's like, listen, like, it's not even all the stuff that you make me go through. It's not even all the dumb shit that you do. It's the fact that you're a little bitch. It's the fact that you're a little pussy, straight up. And it's not to offend anyone. It's just to be real about it. My mom was like, just have the balls to be a man and just freaking, you know, we all just want to leave. Everybody knows it's you. It's always you. You always do things. But you don't have the balls to just confess and say, it's me. You know, that's all everyone wants to hear. 
and I just stood there like very quiet and from that day I've I've had no problems saying it's me you know I've been arrested and done time for for just like it's me I don't care yeah, I got that lesson it's me but you know what people would say like you know what that all these out of all these that one at least that one you know he has balls to just come forth and tell you the truth and he don't bring anyone else along with them you know so anyways going forward uh so let's see let's see uh, to be born from above is to be free to be freed from any burden um anyways so now uh, we'd like to make a connection with the h 1992 which is the hame because see well maybe we should try to let's okay we're gonna do this we're gonna try to open up this blue letter bible thing because i've always let's see process of time because there's something that I'd like to connect, and it's um, the fact that that Ethiopian, um, see, are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians to me, O Israel, saith Yahweh? You know, I probably didn't quote that correctly, but still, one psalm can reference Amos 9 and 7. What is that trying to say? Well, there's a reference. Are ye not like them? So at this point in time, we should be able to say that, okay, he's tried us, and he's tried them. We rejected him, and they have rejected him. Now we've been called back. Now, you know, let's see what happens. But it's also our duty to, you know, to give them the ability to repent to something. So we must testify what is true so that they have something to repent to. If they don't accept it, it doesn't matter, you know. So, but the reason I say this is because, um, you know, the Exodus chapter 18, where Jethro has everything to do with it, you know, this I found this word called haim, or, or pronounced haim. It's the H1992. Now, this is what it says. It says um, personal pronoun, plural. Uh, it says they, those. Sometimes, well, that's not necessary. It says um, with the article, it becomes the demonstrative these. Uh, let's see. Uh, unfrequently, it takes, it takes in a manner the place of the verb substantive. Even with feminines, let's see. It says, and for the second person, Zephaniah. 2 and 12, you also, O Cushites, shall be stricken through with my sword. So basically, it's like this comparison. And even if, because I don't know the grammar, the Hebrew grammar, but I'm pretty sure there's still some connection. Um, basically, it's like, it's like these two, these also, they also will be. So who are the other ones? Well, it's these two people. It's these two people that is always like, um, you know, one like the other. And it's, it's. The Ethiopian according to the law, and it's the the Israelite according to to the promise. So ye too, Ethiopians, and as a matter of fact, 1992 is kind of like when the slain with the sword begins because they've been slayed with the, you know, with the with the brutalities of um of the laws of cause and effect. What some what some would say karma, but now now they must be slayed with the mouth of men you know that that testifies truth before them so basically this is um i took this out of uh the book of exodus chapter 2 verse 23 where, where it says and it came to pass in process of time that the king of egypt died and the children of israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried and their cry came up to god by reason of the bondage so what i'm trying to say here is that Chaim rab yom so it, it multiplied these two multiplied in time I, I don't see how how it could connect to to um when it came to pass when when these came to pass I don't know when these multiplied Rab in in when these multiplied in the day the king died so you know I don't see how it how it I mean the multiplication of the day of the time these these days multiplied I don't know but anyways, uh, the connection is kind of like, it's still there. It's the fact that, that um, who was freed by Moses first? It was the Ethiopians. That's how he married an Ethiopian woman. Because the Ethiopian, which is the daughter of seven, you know, the Bathsheba, she was, um, you know, taking her father's flock. Why would she? Lest her father had no male, male descendants to take charge of that role. So basically... The queen of seven, or the daughter of seven, uh, daughters of Jethro, priest of Midian, she goes to water the flocks, but she's being downpressed. She's being um, bullied. She's being, she's 
they're they're being um they too are suffering at the at the hands of um of these uh these these wicked ones so moses actually takes a stand and defends them moses frees the flock of jethro and zipporah from the hands of the downpressor and then he leads them and actually Haim actually it actually like um goes into it, once the word is um is kind of what do you say like a uh, uh, taken to its root it'll lead you to um to to hook and to halak or yalak to walk well where did he take these two where did moses take these he took them to the to the uh the burning bush to the flame you know so he um he led them to the backside of the desert desert of mount horeb and or to the backside of of mount horeb the same mountain where israel was to come and worship so what does that mean who came through the front well perhaps israel but who came through the back the flock of the flock of jethro which is um the house of jethro which moses was faithful to and kept that house too so it takes us to halak to the walk to go so they went with him he was taking care of the flock of jethro of his congregation of his people so he first liberated or delivered or freed the the ethiopians and then in the process of time or when the days multiplied these also cried out to jah and then moses was sent to them so you see the connection both were freed by by moses so how does this tie in with the, well it, it automatically ties in but we'll add to this that both were baptized israel and ethiopians were baptized with water waters in spanish when you say aguas it's actually to say danger so you know uh take it for what you may receive it to be but it doesn't change the fact that moshe is drawn out of water so moshe being the baptized the baptized one in the fullness he's drawn out of water and then he draws the ethiopians first through zipporah and the flock of jethro and saves them and then kind of congregates and does that and then later on he goes and draws a spiritual house so he's got a flesh house through ethiopia which is her woman her her body her church and then he has a spirit his spiritual people which he frees from egypt as well and um uh what's it to us well he both are baptized through him because he's drawn out of water and now they're drawn into into the the burning bush you know the the yeah the burning bush on mount Horeb, and so you know baptism through water and fire and both receive a similar experience now that's what we're trying to say now how does this relate well uh, princes shall come out of egypt ethiopia shall stretch forth their hands so what's that it's moses coming out of egypt and zipporah stretching forth her hands to moses so we have this kind of like a, this un undeniable connection of, of these two people that have always been likened one to the other so except ethiopia would be the flesh and then um israel would be the the the, the spiritual promise so like a soul to the body and so the soul must find its body and then come together so that we may live in the same spirit and that's what um the first power of the trinity does you know uh it's resurrected christ in nine nine so now i think we could we could pause i mean there, there'd be so much more that we could um actually bring forth concerning that but but um you know that's uh i think we'll just pause at this point so you know shalom